Hello there, and welcome to our home here in Brittany in Northwest France. If you're here for the first time, I'm Jane. My husband, Michael, is behind the camera. We are thrifty, frugal, early retirees. We are debt and mortgage free, and we share our money saving tips with all of you. It's Wednesday, so welcome to our midweek money chat. And today, hmm, I'm gonna ask you a question. Have you ever been frugal shamed? As I think about this frugal shaming, if you're someone who lives on a budget for whatever reason, if you are frugal for whatever reason, someone may have at some stage questioned you. Why aren't you going out? Why aren't you going on the work do? Go on, you can afford it. You're on the same wages as me. We're going, we can afford it. Are you gonna to come to the sales with us? Why not? Some good bargains there, are you gonna come? And you get that kind of criticism, don't you? You know that time you're in the staff room and you're heating up your leftovers and somebody's gotta make a point about it. Didn't you have that yesterday? You, you're gonna be okay eating that two days in a row. Or don't you worry about germs. Oh, I couldn't eat that. And then you get the FOMOs and the YOLOs. Oh, you only live once. The people who want to tell you everything about the things that they do, and you tell them about the things that you do, and oh no, oh, I couldn't live like that. Oh, I'd be so bored, I couldn't live like that. And all of those things, they're frugal shaming. put that question out there to my Facebook group, my Frugal Queen in France Facebook group, and I asked the question, have you ever been frugal shamed? Yes, 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 and loads and loads and loads of examples. And we've been frugal shamed. We've been frugal shamed by people we know, people in work. We've been frugal shamed on frugal groups and frugal communities. So yeah, it's really, really frequent, isn't it? Oh, are you going to be all right driving around in that old banger of a car? Oh, I don't know if I would trust that. People don't want to go for a lift in your old banger of a car. Well, what if it breaks down? There's, it's out there. People will, are you going to be doing anything to your house? Oh, you haven't done the skirting boards yet. Are you going to be doing this? Are you going to be doing that? Or are you going to keep any period features? Oh, I don't know if I could do plastic UPVC windows. I want artisan made wooden ones. People do it all of the time. I don't know if they think they're well-meaning or not, but they do it all of the time. And what they're doing frequently is questioning what you spend your money on. Why aren't you spending your money? And it seems to be a free-for-all, doesn't it? The people seem to think that they can put their 10 pence worth in on what people buy, eat, wear, drive, live in. It happens all the time. But I'm going to go through now some kind of strategies and tips because that's the important part. That's what you're here for. Strategies and tips of how to cope with all of that unnecessary frugal shaming. <laughs> start with a big one first this time and it's this one if anyone questions you on the way you live what you eat if you're eating leftovers the car you're driving the clothes you're wearing first thing you need to do is nothing because you don't need to explain or apologize about the way you live to anybody they're not you they're not living with you they're not in a relationship with you, they're not paying your bills, and frankly, it's none of their business. How you live is absolutely your choice. When I have been on the ropes and people have absolutely got me in an absolute corner, I've turned around and said this, well, I'm happy with my life and I'm not hurting anybody. And that's usually my final word on that. But hear this one and take it away, take it to heart and, and and let it rest with you. You don't know anyone an explanation and you don't have to apologize to anybody for the financial choices that you make. Now this might be different 
in some countries, but definitely if you're in the UK and you're in a workplace and you're doing the same job as other people and you've been there the same amount of time and you're on the same pay grade, people will know what you earn and you will know what other people earn and you're probably all on the same pay. So you might get the frugal shaming of people say, well, I earn the same as you. I'm not worrying about money. I'm not worrying about a budget. They may say things like that, but this is something for you to deal with. You don't have to discuss it with them, but this is something for you to reconcile yourself with. And it's remembering this. It's not what you earn, it's what you save. So if you have decided to live on a budget, to be frugal, to think about what you do with your money, the percentage that you are saving is probably greater than the percentage that other people are saving. And don't forget in places like the UK, a huge amount of people have just debt and no saving at all. So that's something for you to take away. Let it rest with you. Let it sit with you. Make yourself feel comfortable and at home with it. It's not what you earn, it's what you save. And if you are budgeting to save, you're in a really good place and feel comfortable with it. Now my next point is you are probably frugal for a reason and there's plenty of it. If your reason is just to say goodbye to the rat race, that's your reason. If your reason is to save for a wedding, a house deposit, a home extension, whatever it is, if you're saving for something and you have a financial target, it's yours. Remember that reason, remember that reason. It could be to retire. It could be to save for your retirement. It could be because you want to stay home with your children. That's good enough reason for anybody as far as I'm concerned. It could be because you want to save up and pay to go on a course, that you want to go back to education, that you want to just take a break. For whatever reason, remember that. So, when you're sitting back and reflecting on this frugal criticism, this frugal shaming, remember your reason why. Now, for many years, we were saving to pay more off our mortgage. We were saving more to retire early. And it kept us going. We didn't really, within our workplaces, experience frugal shaming, but we certainly had our lifestyle and our budgeting questions. But we always remembered why we were doing it. And we'd often sit and reflect on it and go, we're getting there, we're getting there. And we always used to say, it's money coming in this direction, it's not money going in that direction. And it just sustained us and kept us going. So the biggest thing, let it rest with you, let it sit with you, feel comfortable with it, it's yours, you own it. Remember why, and you are being frugal for a reason. Now there's another point as well. There was a point when everybody was frugal. Mike and I were young in the 1970s in the United Kingdom. Everybody was frugal. Everybody's dad had a back garden with tomatoes in it and a greenhouse. Dads went fishing, mums knitted our jumpers. Our parents were mending things, fixing things. Dads went fishing and we ate that fish. Didn't do it as a hobby, we did it for stuff to eat. People were chopping their own firewood, lighting their own fires, scrimping and saving to pay the coal man on a Friday. We're not talking about the Great Depression, we're talking about the 1970s. If you had a bag of sweets on a Saturday, you were lucky. I'm beginning to sound like a comedy sketch here. The things are cyclical. And then we were talking about the 1980s in the United Kingdom. And any of us of our age will remember the pop group UB40 and the pop song one in 10, because one in 10 people were on the dole. They didn't have a job. So these things come around and all of a sudden, bang, we're back in that financial situation again, where bills are rising, costs are rising, 
People can't get those pay rises. There isn't the extra work. People are struggling. And we're back in that situation again. And you know what? We are the people who've got the skills to survive this. We know about budgeting. We can make do and mend. All of a sudden, we're back in fashion again. So, frugality was once the thing. And you know what? We're back there again, aren't we? It's not sometimes a choice for some people and they're having to learn, but we're here to share it. And we're happy to do that. It's skills that we've practiced over the years. So remember this one, there was a time once when everybody was frugal. There are times when everybody has to be frugal and we're right back in that situation again. It can be difficult when people can be quite judgmental, but this is something that can sustain you through anything. And remember this, when you are being mindful with your money, when you are being frugal, when you are living on a budget, that you are the one who is financially enlightened. You not only know how much things cost, how much you have to save for it, you know the value of things. You know the value of time. You know the value of paying off your mortgage early. You know the value of putting extra into your pay pension payments, for example. And you know the value of waiting for things. So you are financially enlightened. And the opposite of that, often people who are frun frugally shaming you are willfully, financially ignorant. Off they go and get their takeaway lunch each day. Off they go and get their takeaway coffee each day. I doubt very much if they're thinking to themselves, oh, that cost me that much a week and that much a year. And okay, I could have two or 3,000 a year, but actually, I think I'll blow it on coffee and sandwiches. Actually, they're probably willfully ignorant and not costing those things. Whereas you know the value of saving that amount and you're prepared to take your leftovers to lunch. You're prepared to take your flask in. You're prepared to fix things and you are prepared to wear that lovely jacket that you got from the charity shop because you know what it has value to you. path isn't there to enlightenment there's one stage where you don't know you don't know and there's the bit in the middle that's a bit difficult where you know you don't know when you reach enlightenment you know you know well financial enlightenment is exactly the same and the masses out there who succumb to consumerism who succumb to debt and we've been there we were as we're just the same as everybody else. We came up out of the unenlightened swamp and into the light. We're no different. We just did what everyone else did. But remember that you may well be in that middle bit. You may be that bit where you know you don't know. You may be in that stage of debt repayment, for example. You may be in that stage of saving for an emergency fund or saving for a pension, or putting money into some sort of long-term savings, for example, for a house deposit. So that's that kind of middle stages. But if you've got that, and you're living off a written budget, and you're living frugally, and you're thrifty, and you're mindful about your money, you've reached financial enlightenment. You know you know. You know what to do with your money. You know how to make your budget work. You know that you're gonna have enough money every month to pay your bills, to put a little aside, and you're there, aren't you? You have reached financial enlightenment. And that alone is enough, in my opinion, to see the frugal shamers far into the distance. And you can just ignore them knowing you're doing what is right for you 
and your family. I do like it when you come and sit down with me and have a little bit of a midweek money chat. I really enjoy it, these chats with you. If you've enjoyed it, make sure that you give it a like. If you want some more of this, make sure that you subscribe. Now, share the love, everybody. Tell me, have you ever been financially or frugally shamed? And how did you emotionally deal with it? What do you tell yourself to keep going? Let's flood the comments box below with all of those really positive messages of how you keep going. And I read every one and I love all of them. Just leaves me to say thank you so much. And it's great to see you. And I'll see you again very soon. Goodbye for now.